we have another problem on pumping out test but here only the data about observation well is uh, sorry test well is given and there are no separate observation well but still you could solve the problem let us see what's given in the question a pumping out test was carried out to determine the hydraulic conductivity of soil a well of diameter 40 cm was drilled to an impermeable stratum and depth of water above the bearing stratum was 8 meters the yield from the well was 4 cm uh, 4 cubic centimeter uh, cubic meter per minute at a steady drawdown of 4.5 meters determine the hydraulic conductivity of the soil in meters per day if the observed radius of influence was 150 meters so if you ask me to draw this observation test well the test well goes like this and uh, below your soil layer and they said the dia of your test well as 40 centimeter or i can write 0.4 meters and uh, the depth of your clay stratum is somewhere over here here the clay bearing stratum is there and the groundwater table is over here so this is your groundwater table this is at a depth of 8 meters fine so after reaching the steady state there will be a drawdown right so after reaching the steady state the height of your drawdown is 4.5 meters so if this is the drawdown how much is this depth this one will be 3.5 meters so you no need to remember a separate formula for this case you can do it from the previous formula itself k is equal to 2.303 q by pi h2 square minus h1 square into log 10 r2 by r1 see here h2 and h1 are the heads on two observation well observation wells and r2 and r1 are the center to center distance from the test well right with that understanding you can substitute 2.303 how much is the discharge actually so discharge is 4 meter cube let me convert it as 4 so let it be in meter cube itself so 4 by pi what is h2 square h2 means the head and the second observation well here instead of the observation wells they have mentioned the radius of your influence or radius of your drawdowns extent which is 150 meters right so and uh, at the radius farthest point of your radius of influence actually i did not draw the curve properly the curve is extending like this one minute Yes. Yeah. If this one is equal to 150 meters, so this is that uh, drawdown curve. So at the beginning of your drawdown curve, obviously the groundwater level or head of water will be 8 meters, right? With that understanding, let us take H2 as 8 square minus what is the head of water at your well location? It is from the impermeable stratum. It is 3.5 square. See here this one is also in terms of meter cube. All these things are in terms of meter square. So no problem with the units. Log 10. What is R2? R2 is the farthest well which is the end of your radius of influence. So you can take radius of influence as the distance R2. So 150 divided by R1. R1 means you have to consider the head of water in the well itself. So, what is the center to center distance of this well and its radius? So, you can take this will be 0.2 meters, right? So, 0.2 which gives you the value as some value you will get 
that value will be in terms of meters per minute because you have taken discharge in terms of meter cube per minute i don't want it to be in terms of minute so just directly convert it to minute i'll convert it into terms of day so first minute to hour 60 and to convert it to day multiply it with 24 finally you could get your k value as 234.5 meters per day if you do it you will get in terms of meters per day if you won't consider this then you will get your answer in terms of meter per minute okay fine now we move on to the next problem which is asking you to calculate the yield which is nothing but discharge and they have given you the permeability and here they have mentioned the aquifer as a confined aquifer and the following data are available to you height of the original piezometric level from the bed of the aquifer head h is equal to how much and uh, thickness of your aquifer which is ha uh, is 5 meters and depth of water level in the well at steady state is 5.5 meters and hydraulic conductivity which is permeability of your soil as 0.024 meters per minute radius of your well rw is 10 cm and radius of influence is ri equal to 175 meters for confined aquifer our permeability formula is k equal to 2.303 q by 2 by h a h2 minus h1 into log 10 r2 by r1 here they have directly given the data you can simply substitute it now just rearrange this equation so as to get yield so q is equal to k into 2 pi h a small h2 by h1 and divided by 2.303 log 10 r2 by r1 and directly substitute the values here 2 is there so directly take 2 pi and k is given in terms of meter per minute you can convert it in terms of meter per hour also 0.024 into for hour conversion we'll just multiply with 60 and then what is ha thickness of your aquifer so that one will be 5 meters and h2 by h, h2 minus h1 h2 is the water level original initial water level at the radius starting point of radius of influence so i can take that as 9 minus here the depth of water in the well at steady state is 5.5 meters so depth of water is 5.5 which is head of water divided by 2.303 into log 10 r2 r2 value in this case is your radius of influence 175 divided by radius of your well is 10 cm they did not mention dia of well so you can directly use it as 0.1 meters finally you will get your discharge as 21.19 meter cube per hour fine now the next problem is calculate the coefficient of permeability of soil sample of 8 cm in height cross sectional area is 60 cm square it is observed that in 12 minutes 600 ml of water passed down under an effective constant head of 50 cm on woven drain the test specimen weighs 750 g taking specific gravity as 2.7 calculate the seepage velocity of water during the test see this is same as previous simple problems but here constant head permeability test is conducted which is quite simple so k is equal to ql by h 
right? So if you substitute the given values, quantity of water is 600 ml, which is 600 centimeter cube into L, length of your uh, sample is length of travel, I could say is 8 centimeter and the head of water is 50 centimeter and cross sectional area is 60 and time, time is given as 12 but minutes I will just convert it in terms of seconds. So you will get your permeability as 2.22 into 10 power minus 3 centimeter per second. So now you have computed coefficient of permeability. The other part of the question demands you to compute seepage velocity. So seepage velocity goes like Vs is equal to V by N. What is V actually? V is discharge velocity and N is porosity. So for getting the discharge velocity from Darcy's law, the formula goes like V equal to K into I by N. See here, I you could calculate and K is just calculated. N is required. So for getting N, few other parameters are also given or few other data are given like dry unit weight of the soil. So dry weight of the soil is given. Dry weight of soil is 750 grams. Whatever the soil kept inside the permeability mold, the weight of that soil is 750 grams. So you can calculate gamma D. Gamma D is 750 weight by volume. So volume is cross-sectional area into height of your sample which is 8. So this gives you 1.56 gram per cc. And we have uh, one minute. Gamma D is equal to G gamma W by 1 plus E. And that gives you E is equal to G comma W by comma D minus 1 which is 0.73 and from void ratio you could get porosity N is equal to E by 1 plus E. So E is 0.73 divided by 1.73 that gives you porosity as 0.422 right and coming back to your seepage formula seepage velocity formula P is equal to K. K we have just calculated 2.22 into 10 power minus 3 and uh, I. I is constant head sorry I is H by L constant head is 50 by length of your sample is 8 centimeter. So I is H by L and uh, your N is 0.422 you could get your seepage velocity as 0 0.032 centimeter per second. Just compute your discharge velocity and just compare which is greater seepage velocity or discharge velocity. Now, we move on to the next problem which is on the permeability of stratified soil deposit. Here, determine the average coefficient of permeability in horizontal and vertical direction for a deposit consisting of 3 layers of thickness 5 meters, 1 meter and 2.5 meters and having a coefficient of permeability of 3 into 10 power minus 2 millimeter per second 3 into 10 power minus 5 millimeter per second and 4 into 10 power minus 2 millimeter per second respectively. Here a stratified soil layers are given and you have your first layer of 5 meters thickness and second layer is just 1 meter thick and the third layer is 2.5 meter thick and they are asking you if the flow happens along the direction of stratification what is your permeability and if the flow is happening perpendicular to the plane of stratification how much is the permeability. So first to calculate KH then go with KV. So direct substitutions so KH is equal to KH1 which is the permeability of first layer 
and they said isotropic. So even calculating KH or KV, permeability of this layer of uh, soil is same. And plus K H2 into H2 plus K H3 into capital H3 divided by H1 plus H2 plus H3. Once you substitute all the values where K H1 is the permeability of first layer. So 3 into 10 power minus 2 into 5 plus 3 into 10 power minus 5 into 1 plus 4 into 10 power minus 2 into 2.5 divided by 5 plus 1 plus 2.5. See here, everywhere the thickness is in terms of meters. So, convert it in terms of uh, millimeter you will get 10 power 3 in the numerator as well as in the denominator. Both will get cancelled. On further cam computation, you will get your permeability in horizontal direction as 0 0.0294 millimeter per second. Right? Now, the second, for calculating the equivalent permeability in vertical direction, KV is equal to H1 plus H2 plus H3 whole divided by H1 by K. Here we have anyways same permeability. So KV1 also you can take and uh, H2 by KV2 plus H3 by KV3. Anyways here KH1 is equal to KV1 because oil is isotropic. Sorry. Right. On substitution, you will get 8.5 divided by 5 by 3 into 10 power minus 2 plus 1 by 3 into 10 power minus 5 plus 2.5 divided by 4 into 10 power minus 2. After calculating, you will get your KV as 2.5 into 10 power minus 4 millimeter per second. So, how much was KH? It is 0 0.0294 millimeter per second. So, for the same thickness of soil layers, your KH is greater than KV. That's why we claim permeability along the plane of stratification is greater than the permeability perpendicular to the plane of stratification. Thank you.